Going through the power for the Apollo system on a Borgo tank, we're going to start at the battery. So this would be our battery here. Power connections. The first thing that we're going to get power to is these two fuses. ECU power, 15 amp fuse. Solenoid power, 30 amp fuse. Power goes from these fuses to pin 30 on these two relays. It's just going to stay there. There's no ground, so there's no power actually being used until the tractor is keyed on because we're into switched power. So to get switched power to the system, we have a plug on our monitor harness. That's this plug here coming off the monitor harness. So there's two different ways to do that. They both come with it. You've got a harness that runs to the battery, three pin harness, comes back here, and there'll be a plug or a wire that gets hooked into the keyed power on the tractor. We've got a toggle switch here so that we can simulate that. The other way to get power is to use this plug in place of this harness. So right here, this goes into the power bar in the tractor cab. So when the tractor is keyed on, switch power is going to be turned on to this plug. That switch power is going to allow power to go to the monitor. So you've got your power underground from your battery and the switch power to turn everything on. The switch power wire on this plug on the back of the monitor is pin 2. Pin 1 and pin 3 are your power and ground. Also that switch power, so in our harness here we've got switch power, it's teed. So you get your power going up to your monitor. You also have power going back through this harness to where it joins into the standalone tractor harness that's mounted in the tractor. So we're looking for the switch power plug on the monitor harness and it's going to the switch power in on this tractor harness. That power goes into the tractor harness. There'll be a Y in the harness. You can see it right here. That Y in the harness allows that switch power to run all the way back to our battery connections where we had our relays. So now that switch power is going to activate these relays. So you've got your power from that switch power on pin 85 in the relay. Your ground, the black wire here is pin 86. And then the power, once it's on, is going out on pin 87 on both of these relays. Solenoid power is going to provide power to turn the ECUs on. ECU power relay is used to put clean power to the scales. So we've got our power here. Now we can follow it out into the rest of the system. So we're going to follow it all the way back through this harness, back to that Y in the tractor harness. So from that Y in the tractor harness, we've got our power. It's teed in. It's going to give power to this switch box. So we've got our switch power out, which is going to allow us to power the switch box. It's teed into the CAN network, but it still needs to get power. Another part of that T is going to power our Powell Terminator, our front terminator. So that is also spliced into those wires. So we've got everything from the monitor up there powered. Now we're going to go back to the back of the tractor cab. So we follow that tractor harness back to the back of the tractor cab. And you'll find pins 1 and 3, your power and ground. You're going to follow those through the plug to the other side steel pins one and three, and they're going to come down to this Y. At this Y, they turn around and they come back up into the high current harness. So they don't continue any further than here, they're coming back to our high current harness. That's these two small wires here. Those are going to be trigger wires. We're going to follow those through the plug into our high current tractor harness, and we're going to follow that all the way back till we find the relay located by the battery. Those two small wires are going into this plug here on this 130 amp relay. Those two small wires tell this relay to turn on. So if we unplug that, you might be able to hear it click. That's how you know if you've got switch power coming through the system. Plug that in. Once that's switched, it's going to allow power to flow through. 
The power going into the relay is coming directly from the battery. So we go back to our battery, follow it back to the relay. There is also a 100 amp mega fuse located in line to provide safety for that relay in the ECUs. It is bolted to these two uh, pieces of 4 gauge wire and if it is loose you might get uh, intermittent power because it might vibrate in there causing things to turn on and off so if you have a problem that's one place to check. We've already discussed how to check this so you unplug it and plug it back in. Once this is powered it's going to send power through this 4 gauge wire back to the ECUs and the ground is from directly from the battery the whole time. If they touch together. And if these two touch together, it's not going to matter whether this plug is unplugged or not. Your ECUs are going to stay powered all the time because it takes the relay out of it. So if you have an ECU that won't shut off for power, or even if the key's off, check that connection there. So we're going to go to the back of the tracker now. So from our connections at the back of the tractor, we've got our power, high current going here, going through into our front implement harness. So we've got our power coming through the front implement harness. It's going to go all the way back to the center of the front implement harness where you're going to find this T. That T is going to give us our first ECU breakout. Located at that T, we've got our safety switch loop, auxiliary power, and our whisker switch. So spliced into the harness here on the four gauge wires, we've got the power for our ECU stack. So pins 8, 12, and 16 are going to be our power going into power our ECUs. They're spliced off that main line. There's also a wire spliced off going to the safety switch and two wires spliced off going to the auxiliary power harness. So from four 18 or 8, 12, and 16, they're going to splice off again. So they splice off, providing us ECU power and power for our power plug. ECU power is 2 pin, power plug is 4 pin. And then, depending on the harness, you're either going to have one set, two sets, or three sets of those, whether it's a single, double, or triple. Also, we're going to splice off power for the pin one on our comms plug. So the black ones here are the comms plugs and that's what triggers the ECU. Also we're splicing in power for our switch box connection. So you're going to have two switch box connections, one on the front harness and one on the back depending whether it's a tow trailing or a tow between tank. And that power going into here is going to power the switch box and it's also going to power the rear terminator on the rear harness. So that power going in is the same because they're all spliced together off that four pin harness. So if you've got an ECU or you're not getting the lights, you're not getting any power to that ECU, you can try taking two out of one of the ECUs and just swapping them back and forth using that harness to diagnose your power issue. Because if it follows the harness, you know it's the harness. If it doesn't follow the harness, it could be in that ECU stack. So we'll follow back through to our ECU breakout, that T, and we're going to follow to the back of the front implement harness now. Follow to the back, and once again we come back to our harnesses here where you've got your ISO connection and your high current power. So we're still focusing on our high current power here. It's going to follow through. It's going to come back here to our next ECU breakout. So same thing as the last breakout. You've got pins 8, 12, and 16 as your power. Same splice off for power for your three ECUs. Same pin 1 power splicing off of there. And same thing for your switch box. This switch box power coming out of here splices off and it goes to power your rear terminator as well on your rear harness. You also have your auxiliary power. You've got two powers going there that are spliced off and power going to the rest whisker switch. 